Hello everybody. I am excited because I've been waiting for um, some of uh, pigments to come in the mail and because I live up here in Alaska sometimes things take a little bit longer to get to me and one of the videos that I've been wanting to uh, film or you know play with a little bit was what what the difference is between all of the tips for a heat gun you know why I use the ones I use or or don't use certain heat tips and I thought today we would just play with that so um, I got my pigments in the mail and we're gonna work with um, Ultra Pink Marine. And let me stir these up a little bit. It says that, because I actually have never worked with paste before. Everything I've always done has been um, uh, the powders or acrylic and, and inks, which I really enjoy. So I don't see any reason why these won't be just as fabulous, if not better. And I just put, what I did was I stirred up my, I stirred that a little bit before I put it in. And, and you can see that this is actually going to be a nice color. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, we're back. Apparently I didn't have enough of a clear mix for the pink, so I just added on some, some turquoise to the pink to give us a full set of two, two places to work with here. And these are just little um, canvas cutouts that I have. And it also makes the resin pretty thin on the top. The other thing that's really important is I have a trusty heating pad because um, hot guns get so incredibly hot there's no way you can change the tip until it cools down. So today, we I brought my hot heating um, hot pad so that I can change the tip when we go to do them. So most of the time, when you see me working with um, with the heat guns, I'm using either one of these two or just the plain heat gun without any tip on it. And the reason that um, I ch I choose these two is because when the heat comes out of this, it's you know it, it's forced to expand and come out and it actually slows down like a high setting on the heating pad or, i'm sorry heating gun or um so even on, on low it actually i don't get a whole lot of air pressure coming out of it because of the way it spreads out and on high it i i just have more control over a fan of of air coming out of it like this this one is just a fun way to overlap colors sometimes so i can show you that and then these I consider high pressure. <laughs> so a, on a low setting, <laughs> the, it makes the it actually makes the air come out of the heat gun pretty hot, harsh. So I'll show you why. I mean, and this is actually a fun a fun one to work with, but you have to be careful because you'll splatter everything if you're if you are if you aren't doing it right. So I this is also um, the same resin paste, the titanium white, and every time I've ever seen anybody use this, it has produced fab, fabulous cells and lacing. So I want to start with um, the two, you know, harder ends, and we're going to work on the teal plate. Or board, if you will. I'm 
gonna heat that up just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to use the larger circle. And I'm going to put it on low. I'm going to do it on high. Okay, and you can see how different that pattern looks from the circle. Actually very lovely. And the only reason that I'm hitting it with the heat gun or the, the torch is to allow um, to allow any of those extra cells to pop up. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch the tip to the smaller one. start that one on low as well. And now I'm going to do it on high. Let's be careful of the splash factor. see that's a pretty big difference between the small and the and the larger uh, the larger circle tip and and that and now you can see why I don't really use these inside coasters because of how how hard they push that that resin even even though it's on low so this is the part where it was on low <laughs> and if you look at it it didn't really change that much to high on both of them but effects are absolutely beautiful. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. So, I, mean, I mean, look at that. And I think this one is particularly pretty. Look at that. Okay, so now I'm going to use um, the, the fatter circle again. If I can get the this hot pad is fighting with me a little bit. I'm going to show you the difference in the angles of in the angles of using a heat gun. One of the things that I, I had when I've been, you know, helping somebody troubleshoot why they're not getting cells and um, so on, it was part of the problem has been that they were holding the heat gun incorrectly. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to start with the heat gun. And I'm going to start, start it holding it straight, holding it straight down. And then I'm going to slowly turn it sideways as I come down. So I'm going to kind of hold the camera at the same time and do this. So bear with me here. down. Now I'm going to turn it slowly. Toes laying flat on its side like this. So you see straight down actually made it come blossom out like a flower. And then as you turn it, it turns more into that wave look. I mean, actually, I am really impressed with this gorgeous, gorgeous selling from this white that I'm using. Um, and so look at the look at how beautiful these are. These are amazing. Okay, so this is with I used the the fatter hole on this last one. This is pointing straight down at the resin, and then slowly. I turned it sideways. You can kind of see where I turned it sideways right there until it was almost flush. So from the top up here, get this on camera. I was pointing straight down here like this. And then I started turning it like this as I went down to it was sideways. And you can see the total difference in how that looks. So if you're pointing directly down at your resin, you're going to get a totally different look and it's especially inside a coaster now if i had been inside a coaster all i would have gotten out of that was a big blop of white but on this it just oh look at that <laughs> so so that is the two this one is the two rounds i'm sorry i'm having a hard time with this camera that's the two side these are the two tips that i did on on the, the on the teal right here so now we're going to switch and come over here and we're going to do the other tips, which you will notice a, a total difference, but I think the effect is just as good. I mean, a total difference in, and actually how these spread and how they, um, how they spread when you use them and how they, uh, and how actually less pressure that it comes out with them. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do ready for this white let me tell you okay and now I did when I mix that pink you see those little specks in there that's probably operator error. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now. So I did notice that I did that, but I'm uh, I'm I don't think it was the paste. I think it was just because I was I need to get a better handle on working with it. Okay. So this is the first tip that I'm going to use, and I'm going to point it downward this way the whole time I do it. And first, I'm going to do it on low. I'm going to start on low. And then I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to put it on high for the rest of it. And then high because it's more fun. As you can see, 
you get a little bit more control with this one. That's a lot of white too. So notice that that's a pretty big glob of white. And when I'm using this flat tip, it actually works better. And I'm sorry, these are so grungy, but I've been doing resin for a long time and I always try and preserve everything that I use. So when I'm using, so I use, I like to use this one a lot more. Um, you can see these are a little bit more delicate. And so as you know, I work inside coasters or smaller items more often, but it, it still has just the same setting effect, only it's little compared to this, which is fabulous and beautiful and large. So that's why you don't see me using the circular one is because of, of the objects I work in, but that is so gorgeous. So um, I think I put a little bit too much white on here for the full demonstration, but you can totally see. And I don't, don't see a big difference between high and low with the flat setting except that the, the high gets it done faster because the low you just have to be more patient and push and push your resin and wait for it to blossom out than than on high so i'm going to use the other piece which you're going to see it, it acts similarly except it's whiter on the tip than the one i just used it's, i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to start it on low and then switch it to high see it actually looks really similar to the first one I did so that's why I wanted you to see the flat tips aren't this are, aren't all created equal but they definitely have the ver a very similar effect and the lacing that they do is a lot smaller than the lacing that the circular ones do Now I'm going to toss this one on because it actually acts a lot differently for the rest of this, for the rest of this streak right here. I have to tell you, I keep almost struggling with not using the heat, the hot pad. <laughs> it's just the worst burn you can get or that, that I've experienced has been the heat gun, not the torch. I guess there's something in your mind more about a torch when you're trying to be careful when you're playing with fire than the heat gun, which looks like a hair dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this. I'm going to start on low. And then, of course, you'll hear me switch to high. just as pretty but look how much smaller those cells are and you also may have noticed that I used this to rake it backwards because I find with this particular piece on the end you can pull the resin towards you with it which is a little bit interesting and this swoop right here is exactly what what was what it was doing I just pulled it straight toward me like I was raking the resin and one of the things you have to be careful with this one 
because of how flat it is and you really it kind of obscures your view a little bit I tend to almost touch the I mean touch the actual resin with the tip of this so you have to be careful because in all of that we're trying to do you don't want to you know burn or you know burn yourself or start a fire or drop your pieces in now as you see now that this has been sitting here a lot more of these have popped in So now I'm going to do a line and do the same thing with the flat end. I'm going to point it down and then slowly turn it sideways as I come down. Less resin this time, y'all. One thing I need to learn while I'm doing this is to not smack things down. I always notice whenever I put something down in my videos when I'm talking, it makes a loud bam. So I apologize for that. I'll, I have to get used to it. Okay, so I'm going to start pointing directly down at this resin and I'm using the flat end piece and I'm just going to do the whole thing on high. see the difference there and actually it's easier to see on this one how it went both ways and I'm gonna say too as it as we sit here it's still gonna cells are still gonna pop up but it's a totally different look than if you're trying to make a beachy looking wave with the wave is flowing in one direction it really matters if you're pointing if you're pointing your guns a little more sideways and pushing it like a wave so these are absolutely fun to do and fun to use. And um, go ahead and you know give me some tips if you feel like I missed something when I was talking about the tips in resin, because when I, my experience with resin has been um, basically those those five tips. And I've bought two different types of hot heat guns, and I always find that keeping them in middle heat works the best for me. But if resin isn't moving, like let's say you've been sitting there, uh, you were doing something in between tr trying to get things ready and it wasn't moving um, or you didn't, you know, you let your resin sit there it, and your low setting or your medium setting doesn't work, put it on high because it thins it out. And that's the time when I kind of use the high heat setting is when I've kind of been working a little bit and the resin's been sitting there for a little while. So. I'm going to do a some some close-ups of these so that you can see and I will be putting all like I'll put a little picture on the screen to remind which tip I used for which one and and then of course the lot the last line on each one of these was was me just turning starting by pointing it down and then slowly turning the nozzle sideways and these are just really, really pretty. So, all right, guys, that's all I had today. And I've definitely got a lot of stuff in the works. And um, I will be seeing you soon.